Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Crossing Paths Television Ministry. My name is Don Reed Sr. from Hermitage, Pennsylvania, and we're so thankful that you turned in today. You know, we are really expanding. We're in Florida and Cornerstone and all kinds of television programs, so we thank you for supporting us. Believe me, people, we need all the help we can, but I love what's happening here in the last, even the last couple of days. In fact, the last two shows, you know what? Did you know you're Jewish? Yeah. You're grafted in, you know? Grafted in. And we had a Jewish speaker last week, right? Yeah. And now we have a Jewish speaker this week. What? So yeah. I don't know, Mark. What are you, you know, Ron, yep. I, I, they're, they're getting on fire. That's right. You can watch out for the Jews, Messianic Jews. They're telling, they're, yeah. they're not, a, when you get a Jew on fire. You look out. Look out. Well, who do we have as our guest today? Yeah, it's Ron Dutofsky. So I was talking to you a little bit earlier, and, yes. and you grew up in a traditional Jewish home. Yes, sir. And uh, yep. you guys practiced it. Uh, no, not really practiced it, except okay. for the holidays. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, so tell me a little bit more about your upbringing. Well, sure. Uh, first of all, I just want to thank my God, our God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Jewish Messiah, for this opportunity. It's a great privilege. It's an honor. I grew up in uh, across the bridge from Philadelphia in Camden, New Jersey, and then uh, Pensacola in a suburb. And I grew up in a conservative Jewish home. Uh, I wasn't happy in the home that I grew up in. It was a quite dysfunctional home. My father wasn't around. My mom tried her best to uh, raise us in the Jewish religion. Uh, but we were biblically illiterate, uh, as well as uh, my whole Jewish family, really. The Bible was never uh, mentioned. Uh, even the rabbi gave me a Bible when I was bar mitzvah, and I never opened it. Mm. It sat on the shelf for uh, 35 years. Um, I was 13, of course, of being bar mitzvah. Uh, I am thankful for my Jewish heritage so much, sure. uh, very deeply now, uh, since uh, God got a hold of my heart. Uh, but after uh, high school, uh, it was either Vietnam War, come back in a body bag, because that's where I was at. I was... Uh, shamefully, I was not. Pro I was more anti-establishment. I sort of got caught up in the uh, turmoil of the '60s, the Vietnam War, and I went off to uh, a, a mediocre college rather than uh, enlist. Or I could have been drafted, but I, I didn't dodge a draft. But I, uh, I ended up in college in the sophomore year of college. Um, there was just so much turmoil and sit-in strikes. Uh, but what was even more profound and crazier and heart-wrenching was I, bury, I lost my best friend. Uh, he was killed in a car wreck uh, going down the New Jersey Turnpike uh, for the weekend, heading south on the, on the New Jersey Turnpike from New Brunswick, uh, Rutgers University. And when that call came in, it turned my life upside down. Uh, in the Bible, I didn't know this. I didn't know the scriptures, but in Job, uh, 14, 14, it says, if a man dies, shall he live again? And I always wondered, I had so many questions about life, uh, especially after that. I did growing up because I thought, this is a, such an unhappy home. I grew up in a home where my father never drove, hardly knew him, all my friends' fathers drove, and uh, it was like embarrassing. Uh, that was maybe minor compared to the the dysfunction, the yelling, the screaming, and, and all that went on. But after Michael, we buried Michael, uh, my grades academically, everything went downhill. I used the death of my best friend, we had known each other since kindergarten, as just a great excuse, uh, as being an angry kid and uh, being very, uh, you know, a rebellious person. I was radicalized at the age of 18. I dropped out of college. I went and hit the road and traveled around the country, me and my dog. So I was truly a wandering Jew, searching for the meaning of life. And I traveled for about five years, my dog and I. And um, it, it was uh, quite an experience. I look back and see the grace of God in all that. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, yes, sir. And uh, I, that was back in 1970. 71 up to 70, 1975, 76. And uh, I even had the uh, privilege because I was floundering with my life. I mean, all my Jewish friends were becoming those doctors and lawyers. I mean, we were 
that's the way we were raised. I mean, as far as fa families go, to be the stereotypical, you know, the, the nice Jewish boy becoming a doctor, lawyer, and here I was, I, feeling like a failure in a sense, just traveling around. Uh, at the time, I didn't feel shame. I just felt like I was lost. And in 1979, uh, a friend, I called her my second mother growing up. She was living in Israel. She came back to the States. She was visiting my mom because they were like best friends. Uh, and she called me out all my life. She said, what are you, you're doing nothing with your life, Ronnie. You're, you're tw tw Ronnie. She, and at 29 years old, uh, I, or 28 years old, I was floundering still. I mean, I worked. I didn't feed off anybody. I, I just lived on the road, and I, I worked odd jobs. So she challenged me to go over and live in Israel, and uh, I took her up on it. I saved my money. I sold everything I had, and I lived on a kibbutz, and I, I was ready to make what's called Aliyah and become a citizen of Israel. But uh, in 19, like after six months, they called me out and said, you're going to have to enlist. You've got to you know, either you know, make, make up your mind you're going to live here and, and be in the IDF, the Israeli Defense uh, Force, or you're going to have to go back to the States. So I ended up going back to the States. I ended up uh, shacking up with a woman, with a child. And then uh, we eventually married. Uh, but uh, you know, the Bible says in, uh, in Psalm 127, verse 1, it says, Unless the Lord build the house, the laborers labor in vain who mm -hmm. build it. So here I was married. We had two boys between us besides my adopted daughter. And um, I built my life on sink and sand. And uh, at that point, after some struggles, uh, she had decided uh, we had one separation, then another. Uh, the following year, and she decided she was leaving me. And um, with three children and leaving me, we had a four-year-old home. I was devastated, and I was planning on taking my own life. Mm. Wow. I had my thumb uh, cut off, uh, ripped off my body with a hay shredder machine, and uh, I was in rehab for quite a while, an amputation, a replant. So at this point, were you seeking God, or what was your, you know, you're going to take your own life, but you've been on this journey where you're trying to figure things out for five years, wondering no. why you're here, or what's, what's going on with Not your at all. Uh, the Bible says that there is none that seeketh after God, no, not one. And uh, at that point, uh, no, I was not seeking God. I was, uh, I, d I wanted to kill myself. I, I had enough drugs uh, from painkillers, from the accident that I had, and I was, I was, uh, what, what do you call it? Uh, I was holding them back. I wasn't taking the the pain medication. Okay. So I had enough Percocets and Percodans and painkillers to kill myself. Uh, but uh, God had other plans, and um, and then uh, alone in the house for over a six week period is when I was contemplating suicide. Had it planned out until. A, a guy came knocking at my door one night. He used to be a drug dealer. Uh, came knocking at my door one night with a Bible in his hand. Wow. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Can you hold that yes. thought? Yes. All right. We're getting ready to take a short little break here. Pastor Dawn has done an incredible teaching on the struggle that people have between their flesh and the spirit. You know, the Bible tells us that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood but against powers and principalities, spiritual rulers of wickedness mm. in heavenly places. So this is just what Ron's talking about. It doesn't matter if you were physically born a Jew or not. I believe all, all walks of life can be put into four groups. You're rather born a Jew or a Gentile. And a Gentile who accepts Jesus Christ is a born-again Christian. And a Christian who accepts Jesus as their Lord and Savior is a Messianic Jew. So listen, if you've tuned in today, you need to get on that phone and call some people. There's a number at the bottom of the screen. I really encourage you to call that because we have people working the phones that are there to help you. See, listen, we at Crossing Pass are here. This is not about us. This is about you. So we have some people on the other side of that phone that really love you. They're there to help you. They want to pray for you. This has been a phenomenal testimony. When you hear about somebody that was a Jew so you still, you, it shows you that it doesn't matter what you were born. Amen. You know, the fact of the matter is, is every single one of you have been physically born. 
But Jesus told Nicodemus, he said, you must be born again. That is the truth of this story. Every single one of us are born. We're all eternal. Amen. Every single one of you will live forever. Ever. That's the truth. But you have the opportunity to decide where you're going to spend eternity. That's going to be in heaven with Jesus if you accept him as your Messiah, or in hell if you don't. And that's the truth. We tell you that in love. So we ask you now, we're going to go to this break. Pastor Dawn's done a great job, and you're going to learn about that struggle in Jesus' name. Hi, in today's segment, something to think about. We're going to talk about the flesh versus the spirit. You know, years ago, before I become a Christian, I never understood what that means. And when I become a Christian, truly born again, according to John 3.3, 3, I'm going to show you something of what happens after you become born again. Now look, we of this ministry have always preached that scripture, John 3.3, 3, 1 Peter 1.23. But I'm going to use a little illustration that I've used or someone showed me or I picked up. You know, Jesus spoke right down on earth to the people all the time. He come right down where they were sitting, you know, and he talked to them. So I want to talk to you today because you're talking about your life today and where are you going tomorrow? So here you are. I use this pencil here and this is you are born flesh. Everybody naturally is born. Jesus said, Everybody is born. Pinch yourself, that's born of the flesh. And when you're born of the flesh, you have fleshly desires from Adamic natures, things that come no matter who you are, how old you are, or what stage it comes. Now, someone comes along with the Word of God and teaches you or you hear it on television and you hear scriptures and you see change people's lives and all of a sudden someone comes along and say, hey, I met Jesus Christ. And you say, what do you mean? Well, I've been born of the Spirit. Well, let's go back and see i born of the Spirit, okay? I know that when I was a church goer or going to college, I didn't know Jesus. But when I asked the Lord to come in my life 42 some years ago, I used this as an illustration. I asked by faith. Acts 16, 31 said, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And I made that simple prayer because people have been talking to me. I always say, my wife Donna Reed at that time was praying behind my back and a few other people. But here's when I got born in the spirit, watch this. Now I got a spiritual birth. And oh, look at that. Sure, I still got the flesh here, but it's the flesh versus the, the spirit now. And now, as I do this, what happens? I have the Holy Spirit. You've got everything right now. Your Holy Spirit is in you. According to the Word of God, you've got it all. But whether or not you go any further is now up to you. Are you going to let the flesh control you? Or are you going to let the Spirit control you? Now you read the Word of God. You look at here. And here's the Spirit now. As you read the Word of God, just think, look at this. Oh, I know in my joking, I call this Big Don and Little Don. Now, it used to be that. That was the old flesh, old Don. Now, this is the new Don, the new spirit. Now, I'm going to go to scripture where John 6, 63 says, It is the spirit that quicketh the flesh profit nothing. These words that I speak to you, they are spirit and our life. Now, I start getting back into the world. I start going back out with Saturday night group, which I might should not have maybe. I'm not saying I don't go out with Saturday night with people and have supper, but I get back into the things of the world and I'm going back into things that I used to do BC before Christ. Am I saved? Yes, I'm saved. But what is controlling now? You see, the spirit is slowly dwindling. Oh, people, am I saved? Yes. Am I still saved? Yes. But you better watch out because the more you get away from the Word of God, what might happen? But you sin and you say, Lord Jesus, 1 John 1, 9 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us for our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteous. That's what you've done yesterday. Now watch, hallelujah. I'm born, I'm, I am born of the spirit, but now I'm forgiven. And the spirit now is taken back over the flesh. 
Now, to summarize this up here, people, today, I want to go to chapter 12. In chapter 12 of Romans says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Now you're going to make some changes. Living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, that is a reasonable service. And be not conformed, what? To this world, but be ye transformed, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. Oh, I like that. Here is my spirit today, controlling my flesh. People, think about this. Jesus said to Nicodemus, when he talked to Nicodemus, didn't understand. We have the church full of people today that are in the flesh and have no idea what the Spirit of God is doing. How do you get that? You're born again. What do you do? Read. Do you read? If you get up in the morning, what do you do? You eat your food. Lunch, dinner, breakfast like me as everybody laughs. And what happens? When you get up in the morning, you've got to read your spiritual food. Pick up the Bible today and prove me wrong. God bless you. There are over 10 million problem pathological gamblers right now in America. My life is engulfed in that total lifestyle that I was living. Compulsive gamblers, pathological gamblers are like full-blown alcoholics. They cannot help themselves. They cannot stop. They will lose everything. I start hating myself indirectly when I'd lay down in bed at night and I'd say, try to reason out why am I doing this? You lived in fear, known, not knowing what's going to walk through the door. Is it going to be Don Reed or is it going to be the monster? You're trying to find who you really are. People are looking for it. They're looking for that peace. I really wanted to stop, but I didn't know how to stop. Thank you for that, Don. We're back here with Ron, and, and where we talked, uh, where we left off before, you said you're pretty much ready to end your life. Yes. And then this guy who used to be involved with drugs yes. shows up to your door. Yes. And what did he have to say? Well, we, we called him Jokey uh, back in, uh, we've known each other since seventh grade, but I hadn't seen him in quite a few years, but he had heard through somebody else uh, that I was in uh, dire straits. I really needed help. You know, I was left alone in a four-year-old home, a new home, uh, alone without my family and um, you know I, I lived my life for my family I didn't I didn't live my life for for the Lord uh, my God was my wife and my children we were considered like the little house on the prairie family my two babies my two boys were born at home uh, my kids never had a plastic uh, diaper on their butts it was those cloth diapers uh, they were homeschooled we were like the new age uh, Again, like the little house in the prairie family. So uh, that's why the Bible says, unless the Lord build the house. Well, yeah. Jokey came into my house. I let him in because he seemed different. He seemed, he was just so friendly. And he told me I needed Jesus. I said, Jokey, I said, I said, wait a minute. I said, you know, I'm Jewish. I said, uh, I need Jesus like I need a hole in the head. I said, uh, I just want my family back. I don't know about this Jesus. I said, uh, but he said, well, before I leave, I want, you to, I want to pray for you. I remember him putting his uh, arm on my shoulder and praying for me. And then before he left, he said something about Stevie Frost. Well, this was a Jewish guy that I uh, knew from seventh grade as well. We all we knew each other from seventh grade. He was bar mitzvah at a different synagogue the same day. So it was kind of, uh, but Stevie, uh, I hadn't seen in 20 years. And uh, anyway, uh, a call came in during the week. I, I sent Jokey off, and uh, four or five days later, I got this call from Steve Frost. Well, I didn't really like Steve. I actually liked the other guy better, the drug dealer, the Gentile. <laughs> uh, but anyway, the Jewish guy was like a bully uh, growing up. But anyway, he called me, and he sounded really concerned. And uh, I, he sounded different, and he told me that he, he had heard through the grapevine uh, that I was in trouble. Uh, he didn't start preaching to me, you know, over the phone, 
but he invited me over to see his family. Now, 20 years had passed, so, uh, you know, the last time I saw him, we were graduating high school together. Uh, so 20 years later, uh, here I am, I end up in this guy's house. And I remember uh, they had pizza, and the, the little boy was praying in Jesus' name. I wasn't too comfortable with that. And then uh, we went downstairs, and uh, Steve asked me if I wanted to uh, see a video uh, on Passover. And it was during the time of the Passover. Um, so I said, well, you know, I'm thinking, well, whatever, you know, I, we'll go, I'll see a video. I mean, I'm only planning on killing myself. Uh, you know, and he doesn't know the depths of where I'm at, but I'm in this guy's house. And so uh, I'm watching this video. And uh, it's by Zola Levitt. It's a Jewish uh, ministry. And I, I just, I'm hearing these things for the first time in my life as this uh, Passover presentation is about uh, the lamb. I knew something about a lamb. I knew that there was supposed to be blood on the lintel and the doorpost and all. Uh -huh. Uh, but when, you know, he started talking about the, without the shedding of blood, there be the no, no atonement for your soul, Leviticus 17, 11. I was like, oh, well, okay, you know, I'm, and I'm, so I'm, I'm here and I'm here and then I'm hearing about Jesus, the Messiah, but he's referencing this Isaiah 53. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying, is that, could that really be in scripture? You know, that in the Old Testament, no rabbi ever told me that, there was anything about prophecy and a, a portrait of a crucifixion mm -hmm. and the Messiah would have to die. I mean, the only thing I had heard about a Messiah uh, growing up was something about uh, a king, that there would be someone that would uh, handle the, the Roman oppression, the tax oppression, and, uh, and Jewish people would be delivered from that type of uh, tax uh, oppression. And, um, so to hear about a, a, a Jesus, uh, you know, that he would be suffering, a suffering servant, uh, didn't, uh, it was just very, very shocking to me. Uh, but as uh, I was hearing more and more about the Passover Seder and about the unleavened bread and I knew about the matzah, I mean, I observed Passover year after year at, at, my, at relatives, uh, house, you know, so I was very familiar with the Passover, and I, re I remembered about the making haste and the, that you couldn't have leaven, and I, I didn't know that leaven was really a picture of si sin and the unleavened bread where they had to go and, and leave their homes in, in haste, and also that's where the matzah came from. But then he showed a picture of the matzah. And it said by and it spoke about the scriptures where it says that we he was pierced and you see the holes in the matzah for our iniquity and by his stripes and you see the stripes of the matzah and Jews require a sign and I was seeing this amazing portrait of God who would have suffered for us but it was in the Old Testament it was in the Tanakh so I was just blown away by that there was actually scripture, there was actually prophecy that no rabbi, nobody ever told me about. Nobody ever told me about that he was born in Bethlehem. In, in Micah 5.2, it says that he was born from, in Bethlehem, a little town Bethlehem. The word Bethlehem means house of bread, and he would come from everlasting. Well, that means that he was the eternal God. But these were all things where the, it was like this veil was now being lifted. The scales are being removed from my eyes, and I was seeing this, not even knowing that in Jeremiah 31, it talks about a new covenant. He says, I'll take that stony heart away, and I'll give you a heart of flesh. Mm -hmm. Well, that's in Ezekiel, I think, but it talks about a new covenant, mm -hmm. and he'll write the law upon your hearts, mm -hmm. and no longer would you have to be under the law anymore, but you could be under grace. Wow. And it all came together. The dots came together from the Old and the New Testament, all pray, at the right? cross. And, and Steve again. asked me if I wanted to pray, and I said yes. Wow. And I prayed. I cried like a baby that wow. night because all the questions in my life were answered. Wow. And I'm just so thankful because I had questions about life. And like Job said, if a man dies, shall he mm -hmm. live again? Mm -hmm. And he says in Job 19, yes. I know that my Redeemer liveth, and I shall see him on that day in my flesh, mm -hmm. which is a promise that the body that mm -hmm. goes to the grave will now be clothed in eternal 
a body fit for all eternity so we can worship the one true living God in spirit and truth forever and ever to enjoy him and worship him forever. Hallelujah. In Yeshua HaMashiach, Baruch Hashem, blessed be his name. Brother, wow. it's absolutely That's a blessing wonderful. for me to hear your testimony because I've been saved about 44 years now. And probably the last 25, I've been, God's really been pouring into my life about the difference between just a Jew and a Messianic Jew and a Christian. The one and then, man. That's right. The one and we man. hear this, and you, like I said, today if you tuned in, it's not wow. been by coincidence. There's no coincidence in God's language. That's this right. is a divine appointment for you and your family. Dawn did a great job on the battle between the, the flesh and the spirit. So we want to give you this opportunity today. This is what Crossing Pass Ministry is all about. We end every single show with giving you the opportunity to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Every single thing that he talked about, his entire journey was the battle between flesh and the spirit. So I encourage you, listen, a carnal mind cannot even accept the things of God because they're foreign to him. So if you're listening to this and you can't understand these words, it's because you've never been born again. I mean, Nicodemus was a Jew. He was a ruler of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said, hey, look, we know that you are a teacher sent from God because no one can do the things that you do. And Jesus didn't say, hey, thank you for the compliment. <laughs> Jesus said, hey, Nicodemus, you must be born again. And Nicodemus said, what am I to do? I've never heard of this terminology. Am I to go back in my mother's womb and be born all over again? Jesus said, no. He said, that which is born of flesh, that's all of us. Mm -hmm. We're all born of flesh. But that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. So this is what we're laying be before you today. Life and death. And we ask you to choose life. Amen. You know, he said there about Job. Job said, I know my Redeemer liveth, and the latter day he'll stand upon this earth. And even though the earthworm may destroy my body, yet in my flesh I'll see God. Yeah. That's what we want for you, my friend. So ask Jesus into your heart. Please do that today because we love you. Please understand this, that we at Crossing Pass want the best for you. And the only way you're going to get that is through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. So we love you.